strength in you. Dun, 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 dun. Coming through with the strength in you. Hey, boo. Hey, coming through with the strength in you. What it do, what it do. Coming through with the strength in you. You made it. Good job. Strength in you. Coming through. Strength in you. Coming through. Hey, boo. Hey, boo. I'll be ready. That song makes me feel like this. Like, happy Monday. Happy, 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 happy Monday, Monday, Monday. Okay. <laughs> Let me get my queen in on the scene of all things. Here we go. Happy, 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 happy Monday. <laughs> hey, girl, hey, happy Monday. How you doing, Sugarfoot? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? Pretty good. I hear that voice a little bit. We'll talk about that in a minute, but we gotta get our king in. We got our king on the team. <laughs> Yo, I gotta say, like every time that song comes on in the intro, like I'm in the background just like jamming. And then you come on, you're like, hey boo, how you doing? Honey bunches, a sugar fudge, you know. All the comments you say, so I had to come up with a little extra pizzazz this morning. Yeah, you already know how we rock and come with the. <laughs> but wait a minute, we got a, a automatic how Facebook hey, how sway how <laughs> how am I lucky? I gotta work for a living. <laughs> okay, you got me there. You got me there. <laughs> well, you're lucky because the fact that you can work. Okay, everybody don't have that, yeah. so. In that aspect, you can work, so you're lucky. But we're gonna talk about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> soft life. I just know your soft life. Me too, honey. Listen, we are sick of, of adults, and nobody thought it was gonna be the way it is. But it yeah, is it when is. you were a kid, you're like, I can't wait to be an adult. Now you're an adult. I, I, I wish yeah. I was a kid. Yeah, this is my language. We like fuck this shit. Adulting is overrated. We don't yeah. want it no more. Take it away. <laughs> Adulting is cool from like twenty to thirty. After that, when you have to be a real adult, you're like, oh. I'm starting 20. It was great in my 20s. Like, you feel yeah, invincible. I belong on a beach with beautiful men feeding me, me grapes. But we know oh, you. Me too. You somebody who live in my dream because I want that same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it is what it is that's why we take vacations somebody gonna one day feed us something but let's talk about this thing we ain't gonna even go right into the luck we got a word of the day you just try to take us right into the lucky but <laughs> let's do our word of the day dun, 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 dun. what's the word of the day y'all the word of the day is uh-uh I lied that ain't the word I thought I wrote it I was that. gonna say what that ain't the word Again? come on <laughs> Uh, that's what happened was my teacher had me on the line too long, but this is actually the word of the day. Toodle. Toodle. I'm not sure what toodle mean, but we about to learn together because again, I feel I like it's something you would say. That is something toodle. I would say. Toodle. Toodle. <laughs> I am so glad y'all know how I get down. Let's get this young toodle out the way though. It's Ooh. so big. Ooh. That's what she said. Uh-uh. See, you always... You know what? <laughs> <laughs> so for those, if you have aphasia, we encourage you to practice this word. Toodle. Toodle. And say it, Toodle. Please. I feel like I got to do this when I do it. Toodle. That's right. Toodle. Okay. So I'm going to... We should take turns and we should read. Okay. Yes, I'll do the first one. My screen, bigger. Toodles. Yo, I'm tired of your screen. <laughs> it ain't the screen, it's my eyes. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Toodle, a leisurely journey. Ooh. And do you want me to use it in a sentence? No, I thought she was going to read the second part, too, Sugar. Oh, I'll do it. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> and, and, and I was just trying to say two words, but it's okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. An act or a, or a sound of casual playing 
of an instrument such as a horn or a trumpet. So yeah. I'll use it in a sentence. Let's go. I went for a little toodle today. Okay. Well, then, since Kerr's screen is small, I guess I'll go to the next part with the verb. Uh-uh, and it's big now. Oh, you got <laughs> I just can't see you. You know how to do all that work up in the rear. Let's go, Kerr, bitch. <laughs> Go or travel in a luxury way. Leisurely. Oh, see, it wasn't big enough. <laughs> it's okay, honey. In a leisurely way, yes. <laughs> She's so silly. <laughs> Number two, baby. Oh, we still on me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she did the same thing I did. <laughs> Casually make a series of sounds on a horn, trumpet, or similar instrument. Good job. Good job. You're gonna use Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you gotta use toodle in a sentence. My voice is sounding like a toodle today. <laughs> <laughs> And do and do solid. Of I can't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> that was a good sentence. Toodle. Toodle, everybody. Toodle. So, I think I got one. I was kind of thinking why y'all was talking. Wait, let me catch okay. up on our comments so because I love y'all and I don't want y'all to think that I left y'all behind. So hold on. A Facebook user says, Hello, beautiful sexy ladies and junior. Oh, you got included today, Julia. Hey. Hey, hey y'all. Hey, Alicia. Hey. Toodle. Right. Toodle. <laughs> I love you. We love you too, Sugarfoot. I'm about to toodle on your ass. <laughs> Gross. I want no part of it. I had two to when I put my boss complaining. <laughs> yeah. That's the sound here. Ain't nothing about this stroke, Toodle. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing if about we use it. it. If we use it the first way, absolutely. Yeah. That works. Absolutely. <laughs> we learned the new word, y'all. We went and see, that's what this is all about growth and progress. And before I even continue, let me encourage you to head over to um, YouTube and subscribe to our channel and click on that bell so you can get the notifications when we go live. And if oh, you're, you're listening to YouTubers, stop it. <laughs> and if, you're, if you're listening to us on YouTube or Spotify or any of those things, we encourage you to head to YouTube and watch us live because you actually get more fun watching us in our antics because we are the truth, honey. <laughs> Hey. And nothing but the truth. Hey. I don't know who I'm hey. hey. But before we go into luck, um, I want to. Oh, wanna... you got it. Come on. The last comment. Here we go. Hi. Good Hi. 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 Hey, Francis. I got to give her a special <laughs> shout out. You know, every time I see her. Right, right, okay. right. I already know. Yeah. That's the love. Is if not, she's going to beat me up with go to Chicago. And I don't want that noise, you know? <laughs> You don't want no smoke. You don't want no smoke. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> but no, guys, today we are talking about being lucky, but we are lucky enough to have our king on the scene who always brings us this excellent motivation time. And before we go on to the lucky topic, I want to give the opportunity to my brother, the cool. king of the scene, Mr. Wisdom, hit us with a little motivation with the world. So, Hello, Tony. Um, I can't like say this one. Word for word off the top of the head. So what you said, girl. You... Don't call my name like that, Joy. Don't <laughs> know no, her government, even though it's right there for the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I love you, Dory. Get him. <laughs> so, so um, I wrote today about consistency and how, um, like, big of a, a of a statement that makes not only for your own personal life on the impact you make with others. Um, 
sorry. Um, and say consistent is hard. It's hard work. And yes. I understand that because I sometimes don't get consistent. But I'm telling you, like, right now I'm on, like, a three-week exercise, like, all, like, every day for three weeks. Yeah. Being consistent. And there's, like, this little thing on my Apple Watch that it does, like, these two circles when you, like, do it. And it's so mm-hmm. rewarding every single day. That little bit. Like, it's so insignificant, right, if you think about it. But that little bit is like a reward, right, for my dopamine, right? It hits every time I see it, I'm like, yeah, I did what I had to do. And staying consistent is something that should be vital to all of us. If you are experiencing trauma or if you're not. Wilson, you got a question. What app are you using, honey? Oh, I don't use an app. Um, I like, however, I use, like, I feel that day, like, from my quotes or whatever. Um, like, whatever I'm feeling that day, I kind of look it up and do research. So it's a little more hard work. Um, but that's how I'm able to find like so many good ones because I like go out and look for it. I don't have an app that kind of tells me, you know, Tony says so. consistency is a major challenge for me. Me too, yeah. Tony. I just haven't found it. That's right. Wisdom finna talk about it though. Share some light so on So the quote, the quote of the week is by The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, one of hey. my favorites. Um, my husband. It says, success isn't always a, about greatness. Um, it's about consistency. Constant hard work leads to success. Greatness will come. So if you just worry about those little those little accomplishments, right? Those small goals, eventually they're gonna lead to like the big prize, like the big kahuna at the end of it. So just work hard, stay positive. I know that's really hard to do, but uh, if I can get up and do it every day, you can too. I'm not special, I'm just like everybody else. So just go out there and be the best version of you. Don't try to be mm-hmm. everybody else around you. Try to be who you were yesterday, and you will get far in this life. And that's my motivation time. Ta-da-da. No, but to back off of what um, Wisdom was saying, because I know how hard it is to just go and stay consistent and just be the best person you want to be. So I want to put out some things that may help which is one is a partner, a workout buddy, somebody to help you stay accountable for the things that you say you're going to do. So um, maybe a support group. So that way you can maybe work out with some other support. I mean, survivors just like you, or maybe a relative, something like that. But that's one way to help you stay consistent because we know life happens and it really is not easy for you to be able to do that. Hell yeah, Junior Hernandez, man. Y'all keep me. I got it. (laughs) All right, all right now. Consistency is hard for me. Okay. Girl, we all working on it, though. Listen, we all dealing with it, but. I think that could be like a topic that we could explore in the future. (laughs) And we have like a deep dive into consistency. Uh, Let us know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. Definitely. Definitely. And so let's get right on into it, y'all. I got it saved because I want to talk about the definition of the word lucky before we talk about why we even lucky. Because some people don't feel like they're lucky. You know what I'm saying? Some people haven't made it there yet, and that's okay. So we're not here to judge you and make you feel like you need to be something that you're not. We're just here to kind of shine a light on certain words and make you see, and hopefully a different perspective, to highlight and elevate your thoughts. But let me get right into it. Bow. Boom. Let's talk about lucky. The word lucky. We got two words of the day today. So I'm gonna start it first. It's an adjective. You say that someone is lucky when they have something that is very desirable, or when they have, or when they are in a very desirable situation. That's good. Mm. The sentence to use is, I'm luckier than most. I have a job. He is incredibly lucky to be alive. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about that part in itself. Because I'm sure wisdom and courage got some stuff to say with that. It talked about, people say you lucky 
when you're in a situation of fortune. But is that the only time you can consider yourself lucky? Let's start with no. you. With what do you feel about luck? Oh, man, I'm extremely lucky to to still be here. I know we were talking joy before um, the show, and I kind of wanted to like dive deeper on the the topic during the show because I didn't want to waste all my good bullets just talking to you. So right, um, well, no, before you go into it, Alicia said workout buddies been hitting on me, so she quit. Now give us some advice to that, Junior. You're a man. Um. I know it's, I work out by myself, so I don't need a workout buddy. Um, I know that's not the same for everybody. Um, Alicia, try to find a girl that's not going to hate on you if that's what you're into, right? Like, if you're only into dudes right. and he's hitting on you, probably shouldn't be your workout buddy. So, good call on that one. Um, but don't quit because somebody was hitting on you. The ultimate goal was for you to get better. It wasn't to hang out with that person. Uh, whatever your goal was, but I'm sure it didn't involve that person, right? So um, stay consistent, like we talked about. And remember why you started, I guess, oh, is like the main point. Remember like what caused you to be like, I'm going to turn my life around. And revisit that, and that way you can kind of get that second win or that second breath of motivation where you hey, can go Jeff. out and do what's up, Jeff? Um, but you go out there and do something for yourself. So if you need an accountability buddy, uh, find a friend who's on a similar path. And uh, if not, you're gonna have to suck it up and just be, you know be motivated. You know what? Well, I don't want your advice no more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I like Tony advice. He say make him squirm. Be fine and let him know he has zero shot. That part. What he said. Good afternoon, all of my lovelies. Hello, honey buns. I wish I had y'all name so we could have really actually addressed you personally. But we appreciate you taking the time to watch this. But Julia, don't be telling people to suck it out. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> she quit. Because but, listen, listen, that, is, listen. No, that is some truth to that. You can't quit because somebody's gonna hit on you. And if anything, that should make you feel good. Because listen, it's all this getting is better than not get hit on, right? You know? I know because yeah. that, that'll make me feel good. I know what I'm, I'm a squeeze with the match, right? What matters most to you the fact that that person hit on you, or you want to make your lifestyle better? by making better decisions, going out there, working on yourself. Right. And ultimately, it's not about, um, I, I guess this is like where a lot of people get confused. Like, if you're working out to get in better shape, good on you, right? But work, I work out, like, it's fun for me. Like, it's a, it's a good way to kind of, like, those days, like, today, it's raining. All right, like I even want to get up and do what I have to do, but I still have to do what I have to do. Unfortunately, time goes on; <laughs> it doesn't stop for anybody. So, am I gonna sit in bed, or am I gonna get up and do something about it? Right? Because unfortunately, like I dealt with stroke, so it's it it it's, it sucks. But obviously, it's not optimal. Right for me to, I'm already at a disadvantage, right? right? When I'm at the gym, when I'm doing certain things, so I understand that, but I'm not gonna let that define me or let that win. So you got to be tougher than you know than whatever you're going through because eventually it's gonna it's gonna quit. Like eventually you're gonna get over that hurdle and you're gonna be fine. Hey, Tony said, good. man, I look good, smell good, work right, out. Tony, you just you just like teasing at this point. Listen, Tony is my friend because me and him is together. I will be the same way. Like mm -hmm. this. Now, now you brought up a thing, a disadvantage. What I mean by that is like obviously if I didn't have to deal with a stroke, right? And I went to the gym. And I had all my coordinations. I, it's an optimal advantage, right? Basically, it's like, like being realistic. Like, it's a disadvantage. Deal with the stroke, whatever your disadvantage is. Whether it's loss of your arm 
whether it's lost your balance, what, regardless, or walking slow, like it's a disadvantage. And it doesn't generalize who you are, it doesn't describe who you are, right? Because I'm not at a disadvantage in my life. Like I go above and beyond to make sure I don't, but that's me, right? Not everybody is like that. So you gotta be a realist and, you know, call a spade a spade. It's obviously a disadvantage, yeah, but, you know, everything but it's trying to describe it. Like even though you call a spade a spade, it ain't always, the same answer for everybody so like it's about perspective like to you it may be a disadvantage or somebody else may see it as advantage because how much help they may get at the gym or you know the, the fact that people see them working their ass off and they don't have the the full body motion so i mean it's all about perspective but you definitely got to be willing to call a thing a thing and not sugarcoat it and try to make it look prettier than what it is i think right now in this world that we live in is uh -huh. too much sugarcoat and not enough of calling what it is and what it is. Like, yeah. obviously, you know, if you were... Coordination. We're up and in the gym all the time. If you... What? Okay, I think I had to read that slow. If you all, your coordination would be up and I the gym all the time. Stop typing so fast, Jeff. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. Yeah. And Tony said yes. I just, I just want my who knows, right? I can't sit here and I knew where I live. Oh, I have to adjust a different. I do balance, but I do get it done. Fact. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I can see both sides of it, to be honest. But like you said, in this world, we do do too much of that sprinkling sugar on it and try to make it seem like it's prettier than what it is. It's called a thing and thing and it just is what it is and do what's necessary with it and go for it. But um let's get back into this luck situation. Well before I move on with that, Curse, did you have anything to say about this person um quitting because of the dude who was all in her duke? Oh sorry for that. I mean I'm gonna go back and say don't quit because someone hit it on you, hit on you, or find you attractive. That should be a, a uplift. Because I'm just now, for me, for me personally, I just started going to the gym. And when I first started, I was kind of like, when I got in there, I was like, ooh, I can't do this, I can't do that. Everybody looking at me because I'm walking on this cane. But now I'll be in there like I'm the most sexy person, baby. I'll be up there like just look at it. <laughs> you know what? I, I don't like the way you said that. <laughs> Girl, I, I be having fun at the gym. I'm trying to, I be, I be showing out at the gym. I'll be up there like. Girl, we you know, know you be showing out at the gym. Now I'm scared to let you continue this topic because the way you said just. Oh, no, no, no. I like that, but you know, sometimes you have to find fun in, in a situation. That's so right. I That's started right. it stuck when I first started going, I was so uptight that I was afraid that people were looking at me. So then I started going with my friend and we just started joking and having fun to where I don't even think about people looking at me. I'm mm -hmm. more relaxed. So, so that was it sounds like you're saying basically focus on at the goal at hand, like wisdom was saying. Don't worry about who looking at you, who hitting on you, or any of that because you got to go. And if you focus on that goal, then everything else is irrelevant to what you're trying to accomplish. You know what I'm saying? So I 100% agree with both of you guys. And now let's get into it because I am excited to talk about being lucky. And we got to remind people of why they are lucky to be here. And I know my brother had a lot to say. So let's get it, wisdom. Uh man, like I said, I, I value life more now. Uh, mm -hmm. that I have that I've been through what I've been through, right? Like we've all mm -hmm. dealt with trauma. I've been homeless, I've been you know, domestic violence as a kid, like child mm -hmm. abuse, and I've been through it all. And it wasn't until I had the stroke where I truly started realizing how lucky I really am. Like, I was able to survive a lot of my trauma in my life, but to survive this last one, man, like, that goes to tell you, like, one of my favorite comedians, 
God rest his soul, is Patrice O'Neill, right? Hilarious. He died okay. of a stroke. Okay. Like, what is he, he was uh, at a different level of what I thought success was, right? Like, I was a small face considered, you know, uh, to him, right? He was yeah. such a, an idol to me. And he died from the same thing I did. Like, I, I in the essence, the mm -hmm. only died. I can't do certain things that I used to do. But now I have such an appreciation for life. And I get to to do things that, that I necessarily didn't enjoy in my past life either, right? Mm -hmm. Like my sister the other day, um, she, well, this is like a while ago now, but she had said I'm a better human being now than I ever was. Mm -hmm. And that is such an impact I was having a conversation with my mother yesterday, and she said, "You know, you know why you survived. You know why you're so lucky, because you gotta like tell your story to those mm -hmm. people who who can who can do certain things, mm -hmm. and let them know that mm -hmm. you know you have a story to tell. That's why you're here. Mm -hmm. That's why you are so good at motivating and doing all this right. other stuff. I'm really lucky." To be in the in the in the shoes I'm in, obviously, like with the, like we've mentioned a couple of times on this show, I would wish a stroke on anyone, not even my worst yeah. enemy. But man, I'm kind of glad I had it. I got to meet some really cool people. I would have never mm -hmm. ran into you guys ever, and like really, if you yeah. think about it, yeah. And uh, we're we're lucky to survive. Not only that. We're lucky to still make moments and still create memories. Uh, this mm -hmm. weekend, I had a really good time with my niece and nephew, and I wouldn't have been able to make that happen if I, you know, if I wasn't here. So I'm incredibly lucky. True. Now, the the definition mentioned people say you're lucky when you're going through favor. Good things are happening. I know Courage was about to say some stuff to that. Um, what do you feel about that courage? Are you do you feel you lucky right now? Do you feel like you're only lucky when you're going through something good, or even through the midst of bad things, like through stroke? Do you feel like you're lucky? Yes, because for one, I'm gonna piggyback and say that every day when I wake up, I'm and I'm I be like, December the second could have been my last day, my last day on this earth. My last day seeing my family. Lucky, every day is a grace. Every day is a day to be saying that I'm blessed to be here. Facts. I mean, as what Junior was saying, some people may not realize it, but when you said, uh, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I go into like a zone where I said any little thing I'd be like, you know what? I'm so thankful to be here. I'm so thankful to be able to experience this. I'm so thankful to have people look at my story because it might be one day that I won't be here and I have a sister and I have a niece watching me that if this comes into their life, then they are no. You can overcome it. You don't have to think about suicide, anxiety, depression. You can still live a life and yeah. stroke the because we never know what our family members may go through. So yes, every day, any situation you go through and you beat it, you are lucky because you never know who's watching you and who is you teaching. That's true. And for me, I never really, I guess I never use those words, I'm lucky. I always use those words of I'm fortunate or I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. Or what's for me is for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, they already said it was written out what was going to be for me before I even knew what my cards were. Mm -hmm. So I guess I don't, I don't, I don't know how I really perceive luck because I don't call myself lucky. I see myself as very blessed mm -hmm. and favored. I feel like there's favor all over me. You know what I'm saying? I don't see it as luck. Maybe they are. Do you think they want in the same? 
I think they're one of the same, really, to be honest. Yeah. With you. Okay. Because there's a lot of people that are like, yeah, they're one of the same. Like, it, it doesn't matter if you consider it like the same thing, like with, with religion, right? Like, everyone prays to a God, you know? It doesn't like, there's a sense of higher being, right? right. So, it doesn't matter if you call him Muhammad or you call him Jesus. It's the same thing. Right? Yeah. You're praying to something. Um, as far as luck and being favored, it's really the same thing. Like, yeah, there's going to be moments in your life where the numbers are highly favorable. Can you call it favorable or lucky? It's the same thing. Yeah, I guess so. In my opinion. In my yeah. Opinion. I mean, I can see how it definitely is one and the same, but um, yeah, it ain't really, ain't really but it's just how you, it's the words you choose to use and how, you know, you live your life, but you have to actually be able to perceive it that way because some people don't see like living through this as luck. They see it as mm-hmm. torture. It's almost like you punishing me even more because I lived through this. Now I got to struggle with the burdens of my body not working or needing somebody to help me with everything or needing somebody to take me here and there or whatever reason that they give themselves to feel that way. Everybody don't see this as luck, if you will. So I guess what advice would you give somebody who don't really see this as luck? And y'all got to remind me, I forgot to talk about, I was lucky to talk about my people, but I ain't talk about them yet. So we're going to still go back and talk about them. But yeah, okay. what would you the people? Your mindset. Because I went through that. I went through that stage where I didn't see myself as being lucky. How can I be lucky when I'm not, when I have to ask everybody for help? And it was in my mindset that I couldn't see it. That's the first thing you have to change your mindset. You have to change your mind to want to see something different. So then I started saying, I am no longer a follower. I'm a leader because I had to learn new ways to do things. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what helped me, you know, change my mindset to lean toward that, hey, I am lucky still to be here. And another thing was when I woke up and seen my family, my sister, my niece, my nephews, and I seen a look on their face thinking that they were finna get ready to bury me. That changed everything. Like, no, I'm not finna have them hurt behind yeah. this. They gonna see me overcoming. Hey, really, if you think about it, isn't that like the best example to send to like the next generation? Like, yeah. whether you have your kids or your nieces and nephews or grandchildren or whoever, right? We all have a generation that's younger who looks up to us. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, right? So would you like to show them that you can overcome adversity? Like life is not always gonna be fair. Like right. in a perfect world, nobody would mm-hmm. deal with cancer, stroke, whatever. But it is what it is. Like right. call, going back to what I said earlier, calling a spade a spade. Obviously, I wish I didn't have to deal with the stroke, right? There's a lot of things I give up. My ability to play basketball at a high level, um, sing uh, the way I, I used to sing, I, I dance. Like there's little things that doesn't correlate with making money or doing this that I really enjoy that I can't do anymore. But the, I'm able to make so many memories. Like this weekend, I played catch for the first time legit with my nephew and niece. Like I. Go and, and do a five yard drill, run out and go <laughs> throw the football. But I was able to throw the football, like, and I was active enough where I, I was able to bend over and, and you know, and, and pick it up or catch it. I'm telling you. Um, so even though they may not express it now, I know when they're older, they're gonna look back and be that was a cool moment I had with my uncle, right? Mm-hmm. And even if they never said, they're going to definitely remember it because I left impacts on people that I had no idea I left until I go back to visit. And they're like, yeah, it was because I saw you do. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, 
You don't know, you know. But it, speaking of all this lucky stuff and talking about the next generation, that's luck. To be able to give that information to the next generation. Because if you think about some of our ancestry back in the day, they weren't able to share a story and tell things. So people didn't know. So that's why ignorance went such a long way. So the fact that we're able to educate the next gen generation is a variation of luck. And I think that we should expand on that and be able to give to people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And going back to what Gerd was saying with the, with the whole, like, having your self-worth and identifying that you are lucky. Like, you you overcame whatever you overcame when you're still here. That in itself is lucky. Like, take all the exterior points out of it. Just you survive it till today. You're lucky. You know why? Because there's a million other people who won't survive the day, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna, today's going to be their last day. And if God willing, we're going to wake up tomorrow and do it again, right? So yeah. we're lucky. We're lucky for that. Um, having that that luck and what you decide to do with it moving forward is a whole nother topic. But you have to feel um, lucky to still be here. Like, it's a blessing to live this life. Uh, whether we have to go through adversity or not, some people don't have to deal with it. But, I, man, you appreciate the sun a lot more when you went through the rain, you know? Facts. That's the same for a reason. Facts. That is absolute facts. Like I said, your flowers can't grow without it anyway. But... Mm -hmm. So speaking of luck, I am lucky to talk about two of our African-American kings who have graced the scene for a while, got schools. Well, one got a school. The other one, y'all know him. Muhammad Ali. Ali, Ali. Ali. Back in the day. Yeah. I didn't realize he was born January 17, 1942. Why didn't I know he passed away? That is horrible. He died June 3, 2016. I don't got to tell y'all how cold he was with it because you know he threw them hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but besides that, he was also an activist. And uh, he convicted a draft invasion and sentenced to five years for prison because he was banned from boxing for three years after refusing to uh, infusing induction into the United States Armed Forces. I think I saw that on a, a movie or something. But he ended up going to jail because he didn't want to go fight for the war because he didn't believe in all that mm -hmm. stuff. So he went about that life. Um, widely regarded as one of the most sig significant and celebrated sports figure of the 20th century. And that's all they really talk about is his boxing, but him going to jail and not being about that life. And he also, um, he went to jail because his religious beliefs and opposition to the American involvement in v Vietnam. So y'all already know how, like I told you, Muhammad Ali got on. So I ain't going to even go into all that. But we got Marcus Garvey. If you haven't watched the movie Ali, I think Will Smith uh, yeah. does it. Really good movie. Watch it. Mm -hmm. Definitely fill you in a lot better than Joe Rodrigo from Postcard. Right. If you want to know more about <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Good morning, good morning Vicky. Good morning. But no, that is real talk. So if you want to be curious about Ali... Look, watch that movie. But um, also remember that I'm going to be doing this every episode because Black History does not just for February. And I encourage all of our viewers, if you have anybody who you would like to display from your culture, please inbox us because we would love to highlight them on this show. It's not just about Blacks. None of that. It's about all people elevating one another because we all matter. So please feel free to give us information on some of your people who you want to put out there. But we have Marcus Garvey, you guys. He was born August 17th, 1887. He died June 10th, 1940. Marcus Garvey was a Jamaican political leader, publisher, journalist, entrepreneur, and a proponent of the Pan-Africanism movement. So I'm going to have to do some research on that one because I don't know. Yeah, I was like, I don't know, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> he founded the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League in 1914. And at the height of the organization, 
He uh, had over 5 million paid members worldwide and was the largest African diaspora organization of his time. In 1919, he established the Africa, I mean the Negro Factories Corporation and founded the Black Star Line, which is a shipping and passenger line which promoted the return of African diasporas in the ancestral lands, which means they transported slaves. One of the most influential leaders of the 20th century in Jamaica. So he was Jamaican. So we learned Marcus Garvey and <laughs> I was going to be like, po, po. That was like, don't do that. I po, po, po. <laughs> you know what you can <laughs> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> And this is why we have so much fun on here. Because of people. Uh, Marty, you know, we're just, like, yeah, have that's a good idea. Do that. And I was like, yeah. Do what? No, the, the thing. And listen, Sugarfoot, you know I had a stroke. I don't know what Subby meaning. What's the JM? JM. JM. Jamaica. Oh, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> We have our moments too. <laughs> he went on the Jamaica flag. <laughs> look, now I have, look, I'm lucky to have wisdom who paid attention. <laughs> I'm not even black, y'all. That's sad. <laughs> Did you, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, what they got to do with anything? No, I mean, you, can, you can be smart and not be black. what Jamaica looks like, and JM stands for. You were just talking about Jamaica. I know, but see, that was the stroke brain in me. It just forgot. It went to the stove. The stroke had sent my brain to the stove. So I'm taking me a honey bun on the way back. Okay, it, well, it's, back. A, it's a difference. I, I mean, it's a difference. We, we don't know nothing about Jamaica. <laughs> Curry. <laughs> she obviously took that to heart. I so just I'm didn't go. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> saying, no, I did not. Thank the you way so you said that, the way you said that, you look at you really upset. So I'm going to leave it alone. You were like, ain't nobody care about that. No, <laughs> you know, you know. No, you said, Texas, no, but you Texas. said, I'm not black. I said, we not, no. we don't know nothing about Jamaica. Listen, that was kind of racist you trying to say, because we black, we supposed to know about Jamaica. We live in America. We are <laughs> <laughs> getting thrown up back on me. Okay. Is it because I'm the only guy? Anyway, move, I on, just, move on. I was grateful for you. That's all you I You're the only guy and you're not black. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this conversation is not Tudor. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know I got to get it because he I always be trying to get me. <laughs> guys in the comments, like, it's only a joke. We're good. But no, guys, <laughs> guys in the comments, please let us know why you lucky. Give us some things that make you feel like you just overjoyed to just be here. You know what I'm saying? Just to have breath in your body. Maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's the fact that you woke up today. Let us know. Hit us in the comments and let us know what makes you feel like you're lucky. What's up, bro? I see you about to say something. It makes me sick. Oh. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm being careful for the rest of the episode. I don't want to be called the rest of the <laughs> you, we know you ain't, you ain't no damn racist boy. Cut it out. <laughs> but you yeah, like, I don't yeah. know. The courage is over there, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, skill. I'm Puerto Rican, so like, technically, I'm fifty percent black. So you know, they weren't just people you saying Puerto Ricans, right? You Puerto Rico. You Puerto Rico. That's a whole place. He a place? <laughs> <laughs> you wait a minute now. <laughs> that's it. That's like me saying you Africa. Are you Africa? <laughs> Good afternoon, love. You know I have to get them started. <laughs> 
She said, but you Puerto Rico? No. <laughs> what? Inauguration. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> we have, so we, we have don't quite feel guys. lucky, guys. If you don't quite feel lucky, look at your environment. Look at your surroundings. Look at the fact that you can look. Everybody can't see. You can breathe. So mm -hmm. it's the things that make you lucky, but it's all about your perception in life. Like, if you perceive it all bad, that's what it's going to be. If you perceive it as luck or blessed or fortunate or have a, whatever word you choose to use, that's what it's going to be. You have to perceive it as that, though, because life is going to always happen and it's not going to always be an easy road. And when it happens, how you going to handle it? Are you going to see it as something that just took you away and stole your happiness? Or are you going to see it as, I'm lucky. It could have been worse. That should be the, 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 the highlight of the day. It could have been worse. Like this way, too. Um, hopefully, right? You learned something from that experience, right? You went through your, your stroke or your whatever you had, your trauma. And you hopefully you learn from it. That alone, you're lucky to learn from those kind of things. Mm -hmm. The fact that we can go through something as horrible as stroke versus and like come out of it a better person, um, an appreciation for life. Like, um, you got to be grateful for those things. And with being grateful, that increases your odds of being lucky, right? And like, and uh, you find out good in the world. Good becomes good. So put out good in the world. You get more lucky. Right. Not saying you hit the lotto, but you know. What was the last one? Yeah. I'm not saying you're gonna win the lotto. Oh uh, <laughs> that's a whole different type of luck. That's real. Yeah, then I'm I they let me win the lotto. I'm throwing cane down and everything. <laughs> no, but really, stuff like the lottery—that's a different type of luck. So don't put that. Don't look at that type of luck to see how lucky you are. Don't be like, I've been playing the lottery for ten years and still ain't won no money. Like that ain't gonna define your luck because <laughs> yeah. the lottery is rigged. And um, <laughs> you, you every now and then—that's that's. I don't even want to call that luck. That's that's. I don't know, a help to ass or something. I don't know. When somebody <laughs> wins money with the lottery, I don't know what to call it because I don't call it luck because I think it's rigged. I, I probably play the lottery. My There's a lot, a lot of people who get that money quick and lose it just as fast. So I don't know. I'll yeah, look huh. real. I guess, yeah, I was gonna say, I guess well, that's please what you get. Say what, Courage? I said, please just let me get it and try. <laughs> yeah. You know, you sound like the rest of the world. Just let me try. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I'm going I'm to just splurge it. I'm going to let you know. So just give it to me so I can give it right back I'm to going, you. I'm going with the Facebook <laughs> you for the economy, thing. guys. I'm helping the economy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> But no, it's like again, it's all about your perception. So even if you win a lottery and you don't do nothing with the money and you lost it all over again, what luck did that do? You didn't do you no good. You're back in the same position that you was in. So I mean, if you in a position like what we're in, we're like stroke life, right? We're in this situation. We're lucky because we get to still fight every day to get stronger. Some people did not make it this far. They just didn't make it. They wasn't fortunate enough or lucky to make it past what came with stroke. But you, if you still here today and you listening to this podcast and watching us be crazy like we are, you are lucky, honey. You are blessed. You are fortunate. You are all those things in between. You have access to internet. If you're watching us, you are lucky. Right. <laughs> in this day and age, it's like having air. Internet is here. That's facts. Everything is about perception. That's that's one of the words of the day. Perception. If you perceive it bad, that's what it's going to be. So you just got to really be open to know that 
everything that happens bad in your life ain't bad is to, is to elevate you because most of us have actually been strengthened through our strokes. So although it hurts and it is overwhelming, it's hard. But the strength that we realize we possess because of it is what fuels the fire to know that we're lucky to be able to do that and to be able to give a smile to somebody else or to give some advice to somebody else or I don't know, all of it, just to be able to give this time to somebody else is a variation of luck to me. And I'm lucky to be able to share my space with you. So I'm grateful for Courage and I'm grateful for Junior and I'm grateful for everybody who take the time to watch these podcasts and who listen and who go subscribe and who donate and all. Oh, and speaking of donate, y'all, I just thought about it. (laughs) I just thought about it. We are still hosting our fundraiser, guys. We are out to send some stroke survivors and their families to stroke camp. What is stroke camp? Stroke is just, stroke camp is like any other camp. It empowers strokes of ours. Well, well, do this. Like, both of y'all went recently to a stroke camp together. Talk about your experience. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Well, my experience was great. That's why I'm saying it's an empowering experience. It brings families together. It teaches each other what to expect because... When you go through these things, we think we're going through it alone, and we ch- we're really not. Families are going through it with us. So, the, what we're trying to do is really send these families to stroke camp to bring them closer together because trauma has a way of pulling people apart because nobody really understands each other's trauma because everybody's going through their own trauma separately. But stroke camps bring you together, and it's an mm-hmm. empowering situation. So, if you're interested and you would like to donate. Um, I'm selling candy, but if you don't want no candy, that's cool too, boo. Just click that link and you can donate um, <laughs> to SNU and all the proceeds are going to Stroke Camp. <laughs> click me, that. Candy. I love candy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, you don't she wrong. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> Girl, she I need wrong. to send you some more kids. What you say? What you say about zebra cakes? <laughs> what? Oh, no! I said I had to send you some more. He gonna send you some more zebra cakes? Uh, uh-uh, no, I'm having to decline for that. I am trying to wait myself. I'll put zebra cakes. <laughs> I am lucky because they are on here cutting up. <laughs> <laughs> so so no, okay. Good job, climb. But listen, y'all, find luck in everything that you do because it can all be bad. It really could all be bad. But you always remember that things could be worse than what they are right now. Curse, do you got anything you want to say? Because me and Jenny have been throwing out this luck, but you didn't get to tell yeah. people how you feel luck. I feel luck because every day, it be days that I'm like, I'm tired of walking on this kind. But then I have to come back and I'm like, well, you know what? I'm not in the wheelchair no more. You know, that's true. So little things like that, you have to be thankful. Every little inch, every little improvement, you have to say, "Well, I'm not doing this no more. I'm not just laying in the bed no more. I'm up. I'm taking a little bitty steps. I'm grateful for that. I can say, I'm not staying in the house no more. I be jumping up in cars now. I'm thankful for that. So. Yes. <laughs> we did a we did a, a a thing on a Friday. One of our support groups, and she was in the middle of like a, a park or something. I was like so thrown off because I'm not used to seeing courage like go out there and, and and go after it. But that's so true. Like uh, think about the the wheelchair for a second. Like how mm-hmm. are you in a wheelchair? Like, that's all you can see. Like, all oh, this is the rest of my life mm-hmm. that's going to be on this chair. And it was so temporary. And now we're at a point where we can walk without a cane. Some of us can, mm-hmm. you know, I don't walk that good, but I walk okay mm-hmm. without my cane. And when I was in that wheelchair, I thought that was going to be the rest of my life. And it was only a little mm-hmm. short amount. So, got to be good. This is, this is one thing that gets me through every day 
and it's the song I Rise. And to me, I feel like as being a stroke survivor, we all are together. Every day I have to rise up for the ones that's unable to rise up, the ones that's still in the bed, that's trying to fight just to sit up that I ride. The ones that's walking with Dr. Kane is rising up for me. Right. So we we are all in a line to rise up for each other. And that's just how I get through my day. I love that. <clears throat> It's true. I know that's part of how I get through my day, but it's not necessarily, I don't look at it how you do so much anymore just because it's, my plate is just so full of stuff that I can't think like that. But um, I think of the fortune of I'm here. My mama died from a stroke when I was 10. So the fact that my kids still got me is what makes me feel lucky and makes me feel like I have to, I have to do this. I have to try to build up others like me because when I was laying in that bed, there was nobody to give me hope. And I was just like afraid for what my future looked like. So now. Yeah. I, and everything's so new too. So. Yeah. It was, it was so new. And then I still had aphasia. And I had the left side neglect, so I wasn't looking to my left side because I forgot that side existed. So it was just so, so new. But in being in all that, I realized that I'm lucky to still have the personality that I had or that I have even now. Because even in the hospital with aphasia and all that, I could, I talk, I sung better than I talked. So I used to sing my words to people. And I was goofy through the whole thing. So I'm lucky to have that kind of persona to where I still want to be goofy. Like I would be smiling. I'd be like, am I slobbing? And I'll make fun of myself because I knew I was slobbing on the left side. So it's stuff like that that I see fortune in. And I'm like, now that I feel all this pain, I just think at least I can feel. So I'm lucky that I can feel. Because at first I didn't have that sensation because a stroke had took it from me. So now, although I'm in a lot of pain and it does get overwhelming and I get pissed because I'm human and we get, listen, we tired. But I definitely feel lucky because I can feel. And I didn't have that at first, you know what I'm saying? So, like Curry say, it's the little things. Like coming home from the hospital and rolling through my kitchen in my wheelchair and being able to make nachos. It wasn't no big meal, but hey, I did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like the lucky. first time, the first time I came home, and I wheeled into the kitchen and made my own like cereal. That was like such a big, oh my god! Because I got used to like seeing it. I was in the hospital for like two and a half weeks, and I, you know all my food was bought to me. It felt good to just go and you know get whatever I wanted and make myself something. So I, I'm lucky every day. I think about it the same way Curry does. Like, you know, every day is a new opportunity, a new uh, challenge, right, for each of us. And um, I'm just lucky to still have my my character and who makes what makes me me. You know, I still have that. Um, so it could be worse. It could be worse, and it's not so. I'm all right. I'm pretty lucky. I'm a pretty lucky guy. I'm with you 100%. And I can't stress to you guys how important it is that you find luck or that light that, that I'm always talking about at the end of the tunnel. That's what luck is, is you seeing that bright side of what, what's happening in your life. Like, life ain't gonna never stop happening to you, but how you accept what's happening to you is what changes. So if you can accept what is, and as Wisdom said all through this episode, call a thing a thing. Be unafraid to just put it out there. It's just what it is. It's part of life. And it's luck in that because whatever you're going through has, is helping to strengthen you. So we encourage you to um, just Keep finding that bright light at the end of the tunnel and knowing that there's a purpose for your pain and knowing that it could be worse. So um, I'm going to remind you 
to put your crown on and put that light inside your crown. Turn that light up. That light is radiating all over your body and anything that's negative going to bounce back off of you because you ain't accepting none that's negative. You can never give in to giving up on yourself and always remember when you're down, there's nowhere else to go up. And go to YouTube, baby. But do you got anything to say, my lovelies? Uh, go out there and make sense and stay consistent. Stay strong, stay positive. Miss Courage? I was thinking. Just, I was thinking. <laughs> I would say what well, I was would... <laughs> I would say that you can't go backwards. You can only go forwards. So what you gonna do now is the question. <laughs> Have a good day, my loves. We thank you. And don't forget that strength lives in you to push it on through, honey love. Until next week.